ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor for one such as I to receive this PhD. My teacher said I would be a failure. When I told one member of my family of my intention to form a band, she told me I would never succeed because there were so many bands. But I knew that with originality and willpower, the odds were with me. I swore vengeance. I was born here in this house. Um, my mother lives here. So much has changed since, um, since I was born here. When my parents came here, this was just like a meadow and grasshoppers were everywhere. And... This house has spent so much of um, my life in. You see these... These, these things. I can remember being two years of age and I was being washed in this sink and my brother was being washed in this sink. He's a scientist. It, it was kind of decided in our house, you know, we're, we're completely English culturally and um, uh, in every way, but there are some sort of Asian things that pop their heads up. And, and um, one of them is that, like, my, my brother's the head of our family, sort of thing like that, and, and they're kind of... Way, way we function as a family. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, is that when I was four and my brother was six, it, we had an, a kind of arranged marriage, me with music and Piers with um, science. And so the, I can't remember a moment where I thought in childhood, oh, you know, I'll be a train driver or something like that. It was always, this is what you're gonna do. All the way to the fire. Everybody had the privilege of two inspirational teachers as parents. I, like many of you in this town, am so proud of my mother. Yeah. There's my mother, and, and she's been really my best teacher because I learned nothing at school. had very wise parents who kind of realised that school uh, would be kind of useless for me. And what they, what they did is mum would splash out, uh, it was like 10 shillings a week. One guy who was my hero, and he was master of music at Cheltenham College here, and, and this guy taught me four times a week music. And I had like a, a piano teacher in the, in the village called Miss Keane, and mum paid like, I don't know what it was. It was uh, like 25 pence a lesson for, for my piano lessons in the village. So, like, um, I was very lucky in this way. And, of course, uh, my parents are crazy about camping, so we, we, would travel, we would travel overseas three times a year sometimes, yeah. and we'd camp. I never went into a hotel or a plane until I was in Kilinjo. <laughs> This is the 
summer has, everybody in our, our house that smokes weed, they have to smoke it in here. Except me, the black sheep. Was Game Joe formed here? No, it wasn't. It was formed in London. We just came down to Chelton because we were hungry. And my parents had food in the freezer. And there was a rehearsal place in Chelton that, that I had sort of a, a bit of a share in it. Yeah. And so we were staying here. My parents, like, they were so good, they just moved away. And I can remember that that table there, I can remember having playing the game of Risk with the guys uh, on that table. You know that game Risk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like world domination. You get a very good insight into people's character. And I was born right here. And I've used this as my temple, this, this room, because it's pretty magical. It's the music room. There's the piano here. It's out of tune at the moment. And you can see there's all sorts of uh, things on the wall. There's a look. Uh, when I did the Doors Concerto, there's Ray. Ray's passed on into the other world now, Ray Manzarek. I got to know all the, um, the surviving members of the Doors. And uh, the one thing it taught me, um, was uh, not to make the same mistakes. And what I can learn from the doors is that, um, you know, Ray, God rest his soul, he, he wrote things in his autobiography that, that, that were painful for the other members. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there's this huge division when I met them. And I tried to kind of make peace between them as I, you know, complete mistake. Yeah. It's like the Stranglers, you forget about it. Killing Joke is known by other groups as a family band, you see. Mm. We, somehow we kind of resolve our different... We try to resolve our differences and, uh, and uh, you know... I've always seen Killing Joke as a microcosm of a wider society and I've always felt if we can rise above our differences, there's hope. Yeah. Because we're such big personalities, everybody in the show is huge personalities, cathedral sized egos, each one of us. And um, we're still all together today, and um, I've got to say, uh, just before I came to the UK, um, we did three tracks together in Prague, and it, it sounds so heavy. And to get to that point at this stage in life, mm, yeah. I love it. Have you ever heard a Foo Fighter song that goes, ah! It's where I got it from. This man right here. So I'd like for you to give this man a big round of applause because if it weren't for him, that's you. What do you say, Jazz? Let's do it. All right, mate. And to all those people, those millions of people with no exams out there, self-educate as I did, exercise, locate your God gift, do what you love and get paid for it, and you too will never have to work again. <laughs> You know, I've got a lot of awards and things like that, international awards, and uh, since I was a kid. But the biggest award is, I've ever had is being in Killing Joke because we're treated so well. There's so much love for our band by other musicians, and everywhere we go, doors open and we're welcome in so many places.